Dear students, today we are going to talk about the Mesolithic cultures of India, its general characters with reference to Langnas, Bagore and Terry sites. Before we go into the details, let me give you a brief introduction about this very culture. After the Paleolithic period, the next stage in India is variously labeled as Late Stone Age, Microlithic or Mesolithic period. Microliths are the main industry of the period. The first microliths were discovered by A.C.L. Carleli in 1867 from the Vindian rock spelters. These was followed by more discoveries by J. Cockburn and Rivet Carnet in the 19th century. In the first half of 20th century, L. A. Kamed, K. R. U. Todd, G. R. Hunter, and D. H. Gordon reported microliths from different parts of the subcontinent. The term Mesolithic is conventionally applied in India to denote the cultural stage represented by microlithic industries not associated with pottery and generally antedating the earliest farming-based village culture. The evidence for this stage in India is both qualitatively and quantitatively richer than that of the preceding stages of the Stone Age. So, what are the distribution pattern of the Mesolithic culture? Systematic and scientific works by different scholars have brought to light several Mesolithic sites in the country. Some of the major works were conducted by R. K. Verma in Uttar Pradesh, R. V. Joshi and M. D. Khare in Madhya Pradesh, H. D. Sankalya in Karnataka, V. N. Mishra in Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh. Microliths have been reported practically from all over the subcontinent. In the northern part of India, several sites have been reported from Rajasthan and Gujarat. Some of the major excavated Mesolithic sites in India are Pilwara and Bagore in Rajasthan, Langnas in Gujarat, Lekhahia, Baghai Ghor, Morhana Pahar in Uttar Pradesh, Bhimbetka and Adamgarh in Madhya Pradesh, etc. Now, let us discuss about the principal environment preferred by the Mesolithic people. Mesolithic sites have a wide distribution in India and cover almost the entire country. The following are some of the principal environments preferred by the Mesolithic people. They are sand dunes, rock shelters, rocky plains, alluvial plains, lake shores, and coastal environment. Sand dunes. In Gujarat and Marwar, hundreds of dunes of varying sizes dot the alluvial plain. In Gujarat, these dunes often enclose a shallow lake or pond which 
was the source of aquatic food for the inhabitants. In Marwar, the dunes along perennial legs as well as others near seasonal sources of water were inhabited. Rock Shelters The Vindhya, Satpura and Kaimur Hills in central India are very rich in caves and rock shelters. Some examples of rock shelters which were occupied by Mesolithic people are Bimbetka, Adamgar, etc. This forest produce a large variety of plants with edible flowers, fruits, seeds and roots. This vast rocky country is ideally suited for a hunting gathering way of life. Alluvial Plains Numerous Mesolithic sites are located on alluvial terraces along river banks in all parts of the country. Birbhanpur on the Damodar is one of them. Rocky Plains In Mewar, numerous microlithic sites occur on the low rocky outcrops which were probably better wooded in pre-agricultural days and occupied by Mesolithic people. On the Deccan Plateau, microlithic sites are common both on hilltops and the flat rocky plain. Lake Shores Mesolithic settlements in the Ganga Valley were centered on the shores of lakes formed by abundant meanders of changing river courses. The Mesolithic settlers had ample food supplies from the lakes as well as the Danes' primeval forest of the fertile alluvial plains. Coastal Environments A number of microlithic sites are known very close to the coast, such as on the Selseti Island and on the Terry Dunes, though no organic remains have survived at any of the known sites, it seems certain that their inhabitants drew upon marine food resources. Bagor, Langnas, and Terry sites. Bagor. In 1967, we and Mishra discovered the site of Bagor on the left bank of Gothari, a tributary on the Banas River. It is a large and prominent sand dunes covering an area of about 200 meters east west and 150 meters north south. It rises to a height of about 6 meters above the surrounding plain. The site was excavated from 1967 to 1970, which yields settlements having more substantial structure. Stone paved floors, pottery, and a rich stone industry. To date, Bagor is the best studied Mesolithic sites in the subcontinent. Langnaj The site of Langnaj is situated at a distance of 59 kilometers from Ahmedabad 
almost to its north. The site has been excavated several times between 1942-1963 by H. D. Sankalia of Deccan College, Pune, and the University of Baroda. As a result of this excavation, a good number of microliths, 14 human skeleton remains, and animal bones, etc., have been brought to light. Terry sites. A rich microlithic industry is associated with the red sand dunes, terry sites, of the Terunel Valley district at the extreme end of the peninsula. A. Ayappan, F. E. Junair, B. Olchin, and V. D. Krishnaswamy explored many sites in this area. Due to older transgression of the sea, there are three terraces of sand dunes at 1.5 meters, 6 meters, and 15 meters, quite inland from the present day coast. F. E. Junair assigned the 6 meter terrace from which most of the microliths derived to around 4000 BC. The Terry macroliths are made both from chert and quads. Though the industry shows an archaic character, it cannot be dated beyond 6000 BC. The typo technology during the Mesolithic period. The technology of the Mesolithic period is primarily based on microliths. These are tiny tools made from microblades by blunting one or more sides with steep retouch. The commonly found beautifully fluted cylindrical or conical cores and thin parallel sided blades testify to the high skill of the Mesolithic craftsmen in the production of microblades. These blades were then retouched on one or more edges, mostly by steep blunting, to produce a variety of microlithic types such as blunted back blades, obliquely truncated blades, points, triangles, crescents, rapies, and drills. These microliths were used as components of arrowheads, sickles, harpoons, knives, and daggers. The use of bow and arrow for hunting became common in this period, which is evident from many rock paintings in central India. At several sites such as Tilwara, Bagor, and Bhimbetka, shallow querns and rubbers are very common, suggesting an extensive use of plant foods. Heavy duty tools like choppers, core scrappers have been found occasionally at Mesolithic sites in Orissa and along the west coast. Dwelling structures. Increased food security during this period led to reduction in nomadism and to seasonally sedentary settlement. This is reflected in the large size of Mesolithic sites. Thickness of habitation, deposit both in open air and rock shelter sites, and the presence of large cemeteries particularly in the Ganga Plains. The first evidence of intentional disposal of dead comes from this period. The dead were buried in graves, both in extended and crouched position. The dead were occasionally provided with grave offerings. Another significant feature of the Mesolithic period is art, mostly in the form of painting. Several thousands 
of rock shelters in the Vindian sandstone hills in central India contain enormous quantities of paintings on their walls, ceilings and in niches. They are found in both inhabited and uninhabited shelters. The paintings throw a light not only on the aesthetic sensibilities and artistic creativity of the Mesolithic people, but also on their behavior with respect to hunting and food gathering techniques, dwellings, their social and religious activities, and contemporary fauna. So, what is material culture of Mesolithic period? The Mesolithic people had little by way of material culture. It is only in the later contact with the contemporary metal using and farming based economy that we find in acquiring such items as pottery, metal tools and stone beads for ornaments. Chronology The Mesolithic period is well dated by a large number of carbon-14 dates from many sites in western and central India. These dates range from about 10,000 years to 2,000 years before present. The earliest carbon-14 date from a Mesolithic deposit in a rock shelter at Bhimbetka is 7,790 years plus minus 220 years before present. Another date associated with a burial in another shelter of the same place is 6,025 years plus minus 110 years before present. The beginning of the Mesolithic culture can therefore be put at about 8,000 before present and as more dates from excavated sites become available this antiquity is likely to be pushed back. Mesolithic sites have a wide distribution in India and cover almost the entire country. Of the three important sites studied so far, Bagor is the best studied Mesolithic site in the subcontinent. The technology of the Mesolithic period is primarily based on microliths. The commonly found beautifully fluted cylindrical or conical cores and thin parallel side blades testify to the high skill of the Mesolithic craftsmen in the production of microblades. Increased food security during this period led to reduction in nomadism and to seasonally sedentary settlement. The first evidence of intentional disposal of the dead comes from this period. Another significant feature of the Mesolithic period is art mostly in the form of paintings. 